Hello and welcome follow subscribers and other racing fans today with a setup 101 Barcelona GP with the McLaren GT3 car. Why is that you ask? New AOR season is starting and with the new season we decided we are jellyfish and myself we decided to try something different to not use the Aston anymore but using the McLaren instead so let's just jump straight into uh, setting up the car which um, I have never done before well that's not completely true I think there's a setup 101 for the McLaren at Bathurst however other than that nothing else was done by me regarding this car so let's just go straight into it I think we should have the uh, standard the default setup on so just to make sure uh, reset one more time um, you know my first feedback set settings that's what I will set up first I always use more FX and less FY and FZ scale can't really remember what I've done to the M set I think I reduced it slightly as well and reducing the master scale um, that's just my personal uh, settings how I like the forced feedback in most cars but there's also a little um, a little advantage to that which is the tire or, or the the vibration which comes from worn tires which will be a huge aspect in the upcoming AOR season as uh, worn tires seem to cause vibrations or rather harshly rather harsh vibrations and we uh, um, don't want too much of that in the first feedback <clears throat> and I think it's caused mostly by FY it's better to reduce that a little bit I think I even used 75 or oh, 75 is not possible but something like that okay good we have to see what the tire pressures um, should be at because um, Catalonia always very hot you see 43 degrees Celsius here um, which is rather demanding, especially on the front left tire. Good. So, we will set the brake pressures to 100% with ABS. It should not be a problem. Brake balance, brake ducts, we will adjust that later. Traction control, I will put to 15% and we will even put it uh, or, or turn it off, I think during the driving <clears throat> good That's it for the initial settings here we will use soft tires um, and soft tires are chosen by automatic anyway so no problem downforce well 2.4 that's definitely too high I think let's go down to 1 and two I think that's just what I what I think should be best yeah. weight bias is in the rear that's how I like my cars more weight on the rear of course it induces a little bit of understeering and in the mid-engine car like the McLaren that's what you usually already have so mm, might not be the wisest decision but uh, anyway steering a ratio I like to increase that at least in the Aston let's see how it turns out in the McLaren put it to 15 here for the for the start uh, camber okay minimum camber angle is 0 0.9 we will put it to 0 0.9 then um, I'd rather reduce it further as you know increases braking power and the ability to have more traction but yeah okay so we will have a bit, a bit more stability in the corners that's also quite nice 
Good. Right height. And I think buttoning out in the McLaren wasn't the biggest issue. So we start with the lowest setting and go up if we are buttoning out too much. Reduce it 5mm front and rear. A bit strange that it's more, uh, that it has less rear right height. Usually uh, the cars have some rake. Rake means, uh, let's see if I can show it to you. Like that. Front is uh, more to the bottom, so it produces a little bit more um, downforce and usually more stability to the whole car, but uh, it looks strange. We might want to experiment, experiment around with that later point. Springs also stiffer in the rear. Well, that's because there's more weight in the rear, I guess. We don't change that for now. Seems to be okay. And sway bars, yeah, we need... Well, that, that's strange. The sway bars are stiffer in, in the front. But the springs are stiffer in the rear. That's... I'm no engineer, but um, that doesn't make too much sense to me. But, well, we'll see. we see what brings that bump stops. We'll keep it there. We, we don't change the damper settings for the moment. What we will change, we will uh, reduce the acceleration lock as it's proven that it's better to run with low acceleration lock. And for me, I like it better to run with very high acceleration lock. <coughs> the rest should be fine for the moment. We will see what options do we have with the gears? We have we only have one shorter gear, that's all we can do here. And we have one longer six gear. Okay. So that's the only options we have there. You load mm, we want to set up the car in general, however as Qualifying will be important. Let's just start out with 20 liters. Restrictor is on maximum. That's okay. Good. Let's go out on track then. For our first drive around, we will deactivate traction control. We don't need that. And... Well... I guess that perspective should speed me well. The engine is quite low in volume, I can't really hear it. Let me see if I can put it a little bit louder. Okay. So I'm not great on this particular track so if you see me driving around like a fool probably not because of the car because Tony doesn't like track so let's do some installation laps here not great. We are stepped out there. Uh-huh. 
There seems to be some understeering on the fast corners and some oversteering in the uh, lower corners. I was braking too late a little bit here. Brakes are quite cold. That might be the reason. It was not good. Dampers definitely need some adjustment. Okay, that's what I initial, initially see that the rear is a bit too unstable, uh, especially in the uh, lower beat corners. Also, the brake balance could be a little bit more to the front. Let's put it to 59. The brake ducts can be reduced to 65, as I see the... Uh, um, temperatures being quite low. Okay. Also, we will um, reduce the front toe in, I think. So, at the car uh, has very, very good turn in, so don't really need the toe in there. Then the rear sway bar, we will soften that up and probably also increase the, maybe we will soften the, the rear springs as well by one point. So reduce the rear sway bar and let's see what brings us that. Bump stops, not sure about them. We'll reduce them to zero for now. We can activate them uh, later on if we see that the bottling out is too harsh. Also, we will soften up the past the bumps. One click, two, three, four. Uh, let's take five clicks. And in the rear we do six clicks. Okay. See if that brought us anything already. We'll also reduce the limited slip preload and the radiator as the temperature were, was only at 98 degrees, which is totally fine for the moment. Also, let's see where the power comes in. So we can tell where we have to shift. Okay. As you see, we can shift up quite late. 
or we should shift up quite late. Oops. No, I watched I watched the power too much. Fork goes down when we reach the the red light, so we should probably shift up. Shift up during the red light. Yeah, that seems perfect. Okay. Doesn't matter if we shift up a little bit earlier, the torque is there. Good. Okay. Quite an amount of understeering which we enthuse now, which is not so nice. That was too fast. The car definitely feels safer now. Uh, that unsettled the car too much there. My abrupt of throttle reaction. Definitely feels better for the uh, um, for the low speed part and also the uh, bump part. Oh well, that was a bit too slow there. Very unusual line.
too aggressive in the last corner. And some understeering. Oops. Well, my wheel came off a little bit. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. So, what you can do now is to analyze our last laps a little bit for the sake of temperatures. I go back to the pits and I will show you... Uh, A little bit and there we go good I hope you see everything you need here um, first we will see the uh, temperatures of the brakes so we can judge how hot they got and if it's fine for us to race like that. For the moment I would say that's okay. There are um there is a peak of 700 but it's only in the end where I break to a standstill. So until then brakes were okay 630 degrees Celsius that's good. Okay. So we are fine with that. Tire temps, 118, 119, well, tire temps obviously much too high, but that's a problem with, um, with Catalonia. We can't do much about that, I'm afraid, we can only increase the, increase the pressures a little bit on the left side, but I'd rather not go over two bars in the car as uh, the cars usually start to um, scrub over the surfaces more than necessary with uh, the high tire pressures. Uh, also induces tire wear of course when you are um, you're doing too hot temperatures. Okay, well, that's pretty much what we can see here for the moment. So let's switch back to Roger Cars, go into the setup and increase the left sides accordingly. We will keep the right sides at 190 for the moment. <clears throat> Okay, so what else? For, th for the moment, I would say uh, those are the changes necessary. Um, what is following now is a little practice session, practice session where we only um, drive around the track and getting used to the setup before we make more changes. So. I will do this now and see you later uh, if we have any other changes to make. Okay, welcome back guys. I did some testing, some uh, long runs, some uh, qualifying runs and um, I got the lap times down to 43.1 which is, well... I, I have to be happy with it because I remember 43.0 was my absolutely best with the Aston Martin some time ago. So, yeah, I would say 43.1 is what I what I personally uh, can do on this track. I know guys like Kaki, he's uh, like uh, one second uh, faster, but that's not so much of a problem. So let's get back to track and uh, I'll show you some changes we have to do, we have to make um, to make the setup better we initi initially <laughs> created. Um, I was in general quite happy, 
So there don't need to be many changes. For example, brake balance. Totally fine, totally happy with that. Although when the tire degradation gets too hard, too much, uh, you probably need to go up to a 60, 61, 62%. But for anything else, it's totally fine. I increased the brake ducts again a little bit. Um, they were down to 65, uh, increased them to 68. That's only for long runs though, as the brakes were running a little bit hotter when the tires get worn. You know, when the tires get worn, um, you don't have as much grip in the braking phase. So you need uh, to brake more and if you brake more and longer uh, the brakes get hotter so you need a little bit more brake duct but yeah that's the only thing we changed here and then there is another a big change uh, it's, a, it's a really big change downforce I increase the downforce to 2 and 2 um, Probably for qualifying runs that's not a wise idea, but for a long run uh, I feel the car is much safer to drive, the tire wear is less and well, you're generally uh, better around the corners. I mean, Catalonia should be a track where you need much downforce, as there are many fast paced corners and you usually uh, drive more downforce there. So this is a change I made, 2 and 2. Then uh, we didn't change anything here. Didn't change anything here. That's what we already had changed before. So no changes in those uh, tabs. Um, we will soften up the dampers a little bit further as there are still some problems when the tires get worn the rear wants to step out a little bit over a little bumps but we go softer overall let's do two clicks overall and that's it for the moment also um, the diff felt fine for the first couple of laps, but after some laps it seems to be a bit too aggressive. So what we do here is we reduce the preload to zero. I'm also inclined to, to reduce the acceleration lock a little bit further, but well... Ah, come on, put it to 3%. Uh, no mistake anyway and radiator setting is fine at 10 percent for shorter runs for longer runs you might want to increase it to 30 percent but 30 is really something yeah which is the maximum i would recommend okay it also depends of course on the ambient temperatures at the moment we have 32 degrees celsius which is overcast if you have like a clear weather you have 42 maybe 42 degrees celsius and then you need a little bit more radiator probably gears we don't need to change them and yeah as i'm preparing for aor race 35 laps and you need about three liters per lap and this is 105 liters overall but yeah that's plenty i think because when the tires get worn um you drive a little bit slower you have to drive a little bit slower you go uh, later on the throttle and so you need a bit less so 105 is uh, totally fine for 35 laps yeah for every everything else i think there is no change from my side at least with the brake pressure I would uh, love to reduce it for um, driving with worn tires. However, 100% is best for fresh tires, so you have to make a cut here. 
for longer races I'd probably recommend to do 90% yeah that, sh that should be okay for qualifying runs uh, should be fine to drive 100% okay so that's it for the setup 101 thank you very much for watching and I'll add a fast lap uh, as the last part of the video so you have the initial um, setup making of the car a little bit of testing then extensive testing which is not on tape because it was only plain driving like uh, I did one uh, stint 18 laps just driving okay anyway um, I hope you enjoyed that Tell me in the comments what you thought about it and like the video if you like the setup or the video per se. So enjoy the last bit of the video and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.